Okay, so let's review how we count with fractions. Um, let's just start with something relatively easy. Uh, let's start with one half. Um, if we're starting at zero um, and we're counting with fractions that have a denominator of two, then everything that we do is basically going to have a two on the bottom. So zero would be the same as zero halves. And then you just start counting up with the numerators. One half, two half, three halves, four halves, five halves, and six halves. That's how we count with fractions. So if we're counting by halves, um, basically every single uh, fraction number that we're going to use for counting would end with the bottom number two. And then we just kind of count like we always have with the numerators. And the same thing happens when we start talking about um, negative fractions. So this would be negative one half, negative two halves, negative three halves, and negative four halves. And you know it keeps going in both directions. And, and that's fine. Um, how does this match up to the number lines that, that we know and love with the integers on there? Well, 0 over 2 is the same as 0. If I look right here, 2 over 2 is the same as 1. 4 over 2 is the same as 2. And 6 over 2 is the same as 3. So I know that 1 half is perfectly in between 0 and 1. I know that two halves is exactly one. I know that three and a half, excuse me, three halves is halfway between one and two. So these have a, a lot of value. And you can take these improper fractions and convert them into mixed numbers. And we see that three halves is the same as one and a half. We see that five halves is the same as two and a half. And this is the number line that you're used to. And the same thing's happening over here. Hey, what's negative 2 divided by 2? Negative 1. What's negative 4 divided by 2? Negative 2. Okay? So that's, that's how we do it. Let's take a look at 1 thirds, though. So if we start at 0, we'll just say, hey, this is 0 thirds. And then the positives are 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds. You get the idea. And then over here would be negative one third, negative two thirds, negative three thirds, and negative four thirds. Well, zero over three is the same as zero. And let's not forget that three over three right here is the same as positive one. Negative three divided by three right here is the same as negative one. So when we look at two thirds, we know it's more than half. And well, here's the halfway between 0 and 1, and it's closer to the 1. And 1 third is closer to the 0. So it's that relative placement on there that helps you try to figure that out if you're trying to compare some numbers. The fourths is um, pretty much the exact same thing. Let me come down here and give a bit of space. We're almost done with the counting. I'm just trying to show you enough of these where you feel comfortable counting by fractions. So we're starting at 0 and then 1 fourth. 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, 5 fourths, sorry, and 6 fourths. The negatives, hopefully you're starting to see that pattern, how it's pretty easy to count up. The only thing that you have to concern yourself with is that when you count by fractions, make sure that the spacing is the same each time. Where's 1 at on this number line? Well, 4 divided by 4 is 1. And where's negative 1? Right here. Now, I'm going to come out with the highlighter now, because now we're starting to get into it. That 4 on the bottom of the um, fraction means that between 0 and positive 1, there are four sections. So here's one section. Here's the second section. Here's the third section, and here's the fourth section. We took the space between 0 and 1, and we broke it into four sections. 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths. And that's happening between every single integer. Between 0 and negative 1, we have the same spacing of these four sections. Now, when we use thirds, there's the same thing happening there. Between 0 and 1, there are three sections there.
and each section is equal. One third, two thirds, three thirds. And these thirds keep going afterwards. So here's five thirds right here, and here's six thirds right here. Well, six divided by three is two. So between one and two, there should be three more sections. So let's see here. There's one section, two, and three. For the halves, you're looking at two sections because the denominator is a two, and that means in between the whole numbers, it should be broken up into equal sections of two. One, two, one, two, one. Two. Same thing with the fifths, except for we're going to have five equal sections. So there's one. I'm going to skip one. There's three. Skip one. And here's five. So technically, if this is section one, two, three, four, and five, that means that one should be right here on the number line. Let's just kind of erase this, count by fifths, and see if we get there. Let's see. Uh, zero fifths. One fifth. Two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, and five fifths. There we go. Five over five is one. Same thing happens when we start counting. Oops, if I put a five on the bottom. If we start counting by fifths going this other route. And if I put one right about here, that'd be negative five fifths. So hopefully that helps you out with counting with fractions. Uh, the next video we'll start looking at putting these numbers onto a number line, um, more than one numbers on a number line, and, and that'll help clarify this idea of counting with fractions.